Hello everybody, my name's James. Welcome to another Planet FPL Clash of the Correspondents. And suddenly, this one feels like a bitterly important one at the foot of the table. Let me introduce you first to our Bournemouth correspondent, Neil Grover. How are you, Neil? Uh, yes, I'm, 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 I'm here. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm here. Are you okay, Neil? Yeah, you don't have to send the send the search parties out just yet. But all right, that's good. We're, we're getting there. <laughs> that's good. I, I did hear a rumor that Bradley Parker had offered to send some some of his bleach your way after the weekend. Uh, and our Burnley correspondent Jack Toner's in. How are you, Jack? Yeah, not so bad, thank you. Well, that's better. That was a little bit more upbeat. So yeah. when we were setting this pod up last week and we was booking in the time, uh. Jack said to me, Jack said, uh, I look forward to uh, the next counseling session already. To which Neil followed up says, At least you won a game. Bournemouth Twitter will be apocalyptic if we lose on Saturday. And you did, Neil. Is it? Yes. So what's 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 the mood amongst the fan base at the moment now? It's very split. So I think there is a portion of the fan base that uh, agrees perhaps with the media narrative that I'm sure we'll talk about around maybe the club acted rashly over the summer, um, mixed in with a few, you know, a a growing proportion that want a change now. Um, I haven't seen any reasonable suggestions as to who that would be. which is another argument entirely. Um, but then you do have a, a much more reasonable 50% that is, well, what more did we really expect? By the past two games, and I think Saturday you can put down to a mixture of uh, mistakes, like individual errors as much as anything. Everton game, not so good. But before those two, um, like when we... For when we spoke last, I mean, from those seven, what were Bournemouth fans expecting? Um, so it, it feels like a two game referendum, which um, I think the other half understand in, in Twitter that that's that's madness. You can't make a you can't totally change the direction of the club off of essentially two games. No, I get that. And you'd have probably heard me say kind of week to week. And I know we had you on just before the Arsenal game, but it, it's the three games since. It was the yeah. manner of the defeat to Arsenal. Iriola coming yes. out and saying, like, look, play badly today. Kind of didn't really recognise what we're trying to... Because I kept saying, look, the methods are there. When we spoke, you'd only lost to Tottenham, Liverpool, Brighton. You know, okay, fair enough. Three draws in, mm-hmm. in the other three is absolutely fine. But then to lose like that, which can happen against a good team like that, but it was a, yep. a slap in. Then to get done at Everton the way you did, puts then real pressure on the next two. The first yes. of which obviously includes the former manager who many think shouldn't have got sacked, coming back. Your central midfield player loses his head at 1-1, uh, literally. Um, and you end up getting bait. And now the pressure's on. He's Iriola's odds-on favourite to be the next manager to lose his job. And he, uh, there have been reports circling. You can correct us if if it's wrong. But Irado's suggesting, should you get beat on Saturday to Burnley, game might be up. I suspect, unfortunately, it might be. I mean, I, I'm very much uh, an Iriola believer. I think he is the right man still. But there does come a point in a Premier League, considering the money we've spent as well, that 10, 10 games without a win, I mean, and, and with three of those games, presuming we lose it, if we were to lose at the weekend, being, you know, with respect, winnable, uh, I think the writing is then on the wall. I don't think the board can really do much more then. Um, yeah, the, think... the, fr- the three points for the first seven with what you had, which was a horrendous set of fixtures, which we kind of yes. laughed about in pre season because it was that bad, is like, okay. But then to lose the three afterwards. Yes. You could accept the first seven if you were to then go and get five, six, even four points from these three games. But if you get nothing, I think that's trouble. So I mean, do you think you'll go if you lose Saturday then? I wouldn't be surprised. I hope he doesn't, and I hope that the board is more measured. But this is the first time we're seeing 
this new ownership group reacting under pressure. And they're an, uh, they're an American ownership group, as we've spoken before. And I know from his experience at other sports clubs that he has managed, this is Bill Foley I'm talking about here, he does make, you know, decisive decisions. So I wouldn't be overly surprised if that happens. And hopefully it doesn't, because I think that would prove to be a mistake in the long run. Okay, so t- tell the listeners and viewers why you're saying you'd stick at the moment. Yeah. What What is it that you've seen that makes you think this is the right direction for the club? So I think the reason that we made the change, and, and perhaps that hasn't been what's been communicated, obviously a lot of the listeners here will have seen the, how harshly we treated Gary O'Neill narrative, uh, how we, you know, we... we you know, we sat the young English manager for this for this Spanish chap, and uh, that obviously then got amplified this week. And um, you know, as, as it was always going to be with the result that happened, I think that the changes that we made were to make a decisive culture and stylistic change away from where we were. And you know, regardless of your thoughts over football and, and perhaps how it should be played the board made that decision. Now, I don't think there is, A, someone else out there that could continue to carry that on, you know, considering we've spent £150 million uh, in over the past two windows to achieve a goal. Um, so you're kind of having to start again, which is mad. Um, I also think that the way that he is playing and barring... Uh, a few, you know, frankly ridiculous mistakes from um, senior players, like with Cook and and the, and the second goal, the winning goal. I mean, that was an absolute cluster chuck from all involved. Um, I think he he would perhaps have one or two, three wins, maybe like because you've got that one, the individual error against Everton that set them up for the first goal, where and and okay, there's an argument. Maybe Zabani shouldn't be playing that way, and maybe he's not comfortable with that. But I think, you know, there's enough there, and the squad that's been built that gives me real hope that this team that got plaudits in the preseason can be something really quite exciting. Um, it just needs time and and confidence. I think that's a killer. As you mentioned, the Arsenal game. I think that was so poorly timed for us. It just killed. It. All possible confidence we gained from the first six games was just ripped out of us. And um, I think you see that on the pitch at the moment. Jack, how, how do you see them at the moment? Are you thinking, oh, I hope we go there and beat them and they keep him? Or are you thinking, oh, shit, I don't want them to change manager and have a bounce? Or How, how, are, you, how are you viewing them at the moment? Um, I mean, as it, with my Burnley glasses on, I want to go there and nothing more than get a win. And I, you know, I don't really care about that. But no, I mean, I hope. I can see a lot of parallels to sort of where where we've been in the summer, you know, with American owners spending that amount of money, adopting a different style of play than what you used to from from us. And, you know, we've not seen us do this in this league. I think I think it's right that he gets time. Um, as a neutral, you you, you kind of hope that he, he they can pick up a point and they can try and stick at something because there's, you know, there's the vision's there and they've spent, you know, you don't spend that much money without actually believing in something so I think it would be very premature um, because let's face it you know you can turn around and go oh, there's three winnable games in the Premier League but if it wasn't us and Bournemouth sat here it'd be Everton and Wolves you know but they, they've sort of to pull away a little bit so it's always going to be someone in this position um, mm-hmm. I just think they can turn the corner um, not saying that they will um, you know it's a tough league you know you can go on really bad runs but I, I hope they're given the time and they stick with it um, so I think I think they owe it to themselves, really. Um, on your side, Jack, is there any pressure on company? It doesn't feel like there's pressure on him in the way there is on Iriola, and I think it probably goes back a lot to what Neil said about the narratives of what's happened there. Whereas obviously, companies kind of with you, obviously, taking you up, got you the promotion. Is there pressure on him at, at the moment or not? Um, I don't think so. Not nowhere near in the same same way. I think company's got enough in the bank um, f- from what he did last year. We, we know that's where we can be. And I know we're not going to be as dominant as that last season. But I think if anything, that gives us that belief. Whereas, you know, Bournemouth probably don't have that the same because they've not, you know, it, had we have just had company for this year and he, he came in, in in the summer, 
there'd be a lot more question marks asked than what there is. So I think we've we've right rightfully got that belief in him. Um, I think on the flip side as well is, you know, there's not many teams in English football that have seen the transition from Daesh's style of play to company. So I think the fans also understand, you know, that even though we expected this season to be better than what it has been and we expect to be more competitive, I also think there's sort of, you know, we're, we're sort of holding our hands up and saying, you know what, we prefer this style of play. We understand it's going to take a bit more time and I think people are, um, you know, wanting to have a little bit more patience with it. But patience is starting to, to to wear out a little bit. You know, there yeah, are people but, starting uh, to... As, as we discussed when you last came on, it's only like four months since like it was oh, are Tottenham going to approach for company and stuff like that. So we know that he's being held in high regard. A lot of people think he'll probably maybe go on to manage Manchester City in the future. Whereas Iriola's not got that that credit here in the bank is the problem, Neil. And I, I, yeah. I do have a lot of sympathy. I, you both had rough fixtures. But I do have sympathy with him in that first seven was so bad for you that then to walk into what's followed, it just feels like it's been slapped with pressure straight away. And if you win that game on Saturday, we were having a different conversation, aren't we? I I completely agree. And I think the other compounding factor that isn't being, I, I think I've seen it in one place. He hasn't got any of his coaches. They're still stuck in Spain without work. Oh, wow. Um, the the club keeps sort of putting pressure on the on the powers that be, and they're just dragging their feet. And I haven't seen that anywhere, which maybe is the size of the club. But you're not telling me that if Klopp's um, uh, coaches were stuck in Germany, we'd be having this conversation four months later. No, I'm sure they'd get in for the twelve thirty kickoff. It would be the worst case scenario, yeah. mate. They'd definitely make it in for that. So. What would the style be, Neil? You you said about moving about styles. For those who haven't watched you, like what is different about Bournemouth? Because I think there's, and it's probably a case for this with Jack, which we'll come back onto as well. You have both invested well, but when you look at the two teams, I could make a case Jack's team might even be inferior to the team that got promoted. Maybe your team, other than the fullbacks, doesn't look much different. And I sympathise with Adam's injury you haven't seen, and obviously Alex Scott's first game at the weekend, but the team doesn't feel much different, mate. No. No, and I think we, it doesn't help that until this point we've had, out of that 150 million I mentioned, 50 million of that has been sat in the treatment room. And uh, just just to go off on a slight tangent of a related, Alex Scott, I thought, look, you know, look what looked like he was hyped up to be, considering he's not played for three months, not match fit, all of that stuff. Um, he set up he set up the move that um, that got us the goal. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there hasn't been that. But what the difference is, is we're going from, and again, with respect to Gary O'Neill, he, he was a much more defensive, uh, you know, get the basics right, we're going to play out, uh, we're going to, you know, be tight and all of that sort of style of football, as was Parker. Um, you know, sort of uh, contained football, whereas uh, Iriola is more uh, more on the front foot, I guess. So we're having to go through that and the players are having to adjust to that again. And some of them are doing it better than others. I think it suits some of them uh, more anyway, because uh, some of the players that were here under Howe, you know, I can see that uh, Howe was obviously a very intense coach in that regards as well. So Solanke's actually doing really well out of it because he's used to that. Um, I think Billing will, when he finally gets released, to be sort of that... Uh, I presume Alex Scott's going to do that. Would that be your I think it'll prizes? help. But, yeah. uh, the problem we're now going to have is obviously Cook presumably is going to have a three-game ban, um, yeah, which definitely. is... And, two yeah, league well, games, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, um, which, okay, one of those is City away. And I mean... <laughs> <laughs> like we could we could it doesn't matter who we put out there I don't think but um, yeah I mean it's it's going to be difficult so for the next two games Billing is probably going to have to be our defensive midfielder which I'm not a great fan of um, so so yeah and which I think has compounded it I think uh, I mentioned last time when we spoke about Arsenal the Arsenal game that I was excited about Tyler Adams because it, it allows us to be to put our creative players where they need to be we haven't been able to do that this season, and the Tyler Adams in further injury uh, was a bit of a kick in the in the what's it's really. 
And I yes. suspect it's going to be something we're going to have to strengthen in January, which they yeah, for those be. who don't know, Adams were looking at earliest February now is the latest update with this setback, unfortunately, which is going to mean it's nearly a year without football, I think. Uh, Jack, was was the comment I made fair that you might even be weaker than the team that got promoted? Because I think a lot think that's just so. United at the moment as well. Yeah. Um, you know, out of the thing against Chelsea, I think we started with three of the players that was in our strongest 11 of last year. And against um, against Brentford, I think it was two. Um, I, I think I think we've signed promising players, but very young promising players that have got very little to no experience. There's a reason why they're signing for us, and they're not signing for you know your Arsenal's and your Cities and and you know your Spurs's and stuff. You know we're going for that next bracket of talent where it's there's raw talent there, but you've got to do something with it. Um, I was hoping for more of a evolution, not a revolution, and it feels like we've gone too far the other way. Um, it feels like that real character has been been lost. I think that's what's most frustrating from the fan base. You know, we can we can quite kind of take you know the you know we've had a rough set of fixtures, as you've said. We can take we can take the defeats, but some of it's been the manner of it. You know, even when we've tried to do what we've what we've been best at last season, we've been we've been hopeless at it. We you know we don't apart from Foster, who quite frankly last season was dreadful. You know, he's been our standout player by a mile um, you know when companies talked him up and said you know it was all, that was all part of the plan of getting him early and getting him in in January I just think the personnel as we've gone for you know when we could have gone in for Taylor or Taylor Howard Bellis who's gone on loan to Southampton you know I, I felt like there would have been options in there for us you know we've we've gone all out on Matson, um, offered a hell of a lot of money for him and quite frankly ended up with you know Charlie Taylor who's played great but he's He's not. He doesn't play the system that company wants him to play. So we've we've had to make compromises. Um, but I think I think there is hope there, and I think that's the you know that's the way that we've most sensible fans have been looking at it. You know the reason why we haven't gone for those players is because company clearly touts these next set of players as better than what we had last season. Um, it's very hard to see at the minute because I, I can't see that Al Dakil or. Um, you know, O'Shea is any better than Howard Bellis. I thought Howard Bellis was excellent last season. Um, so that that that's a bit of a when you're left scratching your head out. You know, Nathan Southampton on loan. Southampton on loan, yeah. So that it would have been, you know, the thought that if if there was an option of a loan, they'd have liked him to play Premier League football. Yeah, I, I mean that one particularly because I've watched him quite a bit, obviously for the England twenty ones. Uh, than I would have seen him for you, um, and I thought that would be natural that he'd he'd come back with you, but. I, I guess they, they obviously thought what they brought in was was better. And I, I think we have to say that there's a caveat to say, I don't know if we can judge this yet, but I understand what you're saying. It's not the fact you've lost these games. If, if you look at them and you go, City, Villa, Tottenham, United, Chelsea, now realise you're not going to be happy with zero points from five, but if it's spread across the season, okay. And the away game is what you've lost, uh, um, Brentford and who is, uh, Newcastle. Standard, fair enough. What Brentford lost two home games last year, I think. And the only other two games you've had took a point at Forest, and you probably would de- denied the win by a very debatable VAR call. And you yeah. won at Luton. But it, it's the manner of those defeats, right? Like the way you lost at Brentford is more, it's not that you've lost there. It's, it's the fact that you've lost there and you, you've actually you haven't created much and you've taken a bit of hide in the other end. That's how it's felt to me. Is that yeah. correct? I think it. it... Because obviously the way we played last season was total domination. We had all you know, all the possession, whereas this season was really struggling to do that. But it just doesn't feel like we've got any way to combat that. You know, it's we'll just keep trying to play. We're just so naive and we'll try and play the way we can play. And at the minute, if our goal scorers and our wingers and our attacking creative midfielders aren't firing on all cylinders and scoring two or three, we know we're going to leak two or three at the other end. So it's just, it feels like we're starting every game, giving the other team a goal head start. Um yeah, I mean, like company said in his in one of the document in the documentary in one of the episodes that um you know it takes something like 110, 120 training sessions before he actually feels like it clicks. Um, but it, for me, it's a little bit naive because we you know I know these players can come good and we, we hope that they will. But we built a young squad in the championship. It wasn't like the alternatives in Taylor Howard, Bellis, Teller, and Matson. Or anything like this, you know, the Dice signings of you know your Dale Stevenses and your Ashley Barnes are a little bit more older and robust. They were still young, talented players, and it feels like we've just tried to leapfrog them, and it's just left us looking so inexperienced. Um, 
My worry is, is because there's not enough of those older heads in there to sort of glue it all together, is if it carries on in the same vein, I think it's very hard to try and galvanise them back together. Who's captain? Um, Just why you mentioned that? I don't know. Um, Josh That's Browner. why I've asked it. Josh Browning. Josh Browning. But he yeah. didn't start at the weekend, right? Well, no, it would be Jack Cork, but obviously he's not replaying. So then the advice is Josh Brownhill. Then I think after that, it falls to Josh Corn. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So are you it's just too open? Is that what this is? I think so. We just, we're defending man from, you know, you watched us against Chelsea. We're defending man for man against Sterling. You know, and we're not pushing, you know, that the old dash that we push them out wide. We're inviting them to come inside and through the middle. And it's just, you know, we're not. I don't think there's many defences that would say quite comfortably they could go man for man for, you know, even at the time Chelsea weren't great, but it feels like what we're seeing at the other end doesn't quite match up because we can take, I don't mind us going man for man if if we look shit out up front, but we don't, you know, it's, we just seem to be, we've, we've, I think we've used 24 players already this season. So I think that's the second highest amount of players used and, doesn't feel we don't know what the strongest team is, you know. No, I wouldn't company doesn't know what the strongest Particularly team in the is. wide attacking areas. Yeah. Not yeah, we just signed we've got we've got loads of loads of personnel, but don't know which the best ones are to pick. And for me, it would be, you know, some personnel changes will be getting some of the more, you know, Zavori played loads last season. We've not seen much of him since his red card at first game of the season. Murich hasn't got a look in because of, of Trafford. You know, Jack Cork isn't in there, Brownhill's in and out. He just he just feels like it's all a bit and I think that's that's the storm that's being, you know, you've got to see through that to actually think actually it's, it's nowhere near as bad as what it seems. But I think there's just, it feels like companies made more mistakes already this season than he did in the entirety of last season. Is there also possession for possession a little bit? And I think what I mean by that is some of the top teams, it feels like that sometimes, particularly so when you watch City, sometimes it feels a bit, of, it's control. I get that. But because you're struggling to find the net at the top end and not everyone's blessed to have an Erling Haaland sitting there, does it sometimes feel like that to you, that you're having the ball for the sake of having the ball? Because we should say, it is remarkable that you've averaged just under 49% possession considering the fixtures that you've had. Yeah, I think I think there's an element of that. And I think it, that's the way, this is the way a company likes to defend as well. It's not, it's not just possession for, you know, as free flowing attacking as, as what he sometimes makes out. It's I don't think he given he's a centre half, he doesn't defend the way, you know, the previous regime was. It's more about we don't want to give the ball away. So I think there's an element of that where we don't know how to break teams down, but we just don't want to give the ball away. Um but sometimes yeah we we, we play ourselves into trouble because we we're having this possession and passing it around. And for me, I'll show you, you know, the the defence that we've got now can't play out from the back nowhere near as good as the defence we had last season. And it's remarkable that we're still trying to play out that way because actually if we'd have, if we'd have been committing more bodies further back, I'd be I'd be kind of more acceptance of it and thinking, you know, we've gone for more of a solid approach. But no, we're, we're still trying to play out from the back against better players and the possession isn't always helping us. Even look at some of the recent games there. Even that, you got well beat, I think, Saturday. But they've they've scored three weldies basically. I mean, the first team goals are great. It's probably disappointing from your perspective. Then there's two weldies. Chelsea game, you actually get in front and look at the the ugly. Was it the equaliser that deflected in for the own goal? It was yeah. one of them things, isn't it? Even at Newcastle, again, probably right result, but there's two individual errors there that yeah, cost you. Up, up, otherwise, you're in the game. Most of us watched you against Manchester United and thought you played all right. And I think one of the reasons you two are both sitting here is this was planned in pre-season. We should both come into a really good run of fixtures. I think we have to look a little bit longer term for yours, Neil. But your run, actually, Jack, is blinding, really, up to Christmas, basically. Yeah, and I think, I think like we were saying with Neil before, though, with that comes the expectation. And I just hope we, we, we have the tools and we have the, the plan to get to get through that. Um at the minute, with the way the fixtures have gone, I don't think it makes the home form the best. Um, no, not the home form, the home atmosphere the best. Um, the, the club, again, has massively shot themselves in the foot with um, putting out an advert on LinkedIn for a drummer um, and then also sending everyone an email. And literally in quotations, it was the atmosphere at Turf Moor this season has been flat. Um, to which, you know, all the fans have said, well, you know, if we stop conceding three goals a game, then, you know, maybe we might have something to 
to get behind. And I think there's an element of that where it has been flat. And, you know, it's kind of like you, you will recognise that yourself, but you don't always want your club to point it out to you. I think had we have had this discussion about how do we improve the atmosphere at the end of last season, it would have been much more well received with the fans. So, yeah, the, the, the fixtures are good. Um, but I, in terms of looking at it from an FPL lens, I don't see the defence shaping up anytime soon. I think it, we've, we're going to maybe start scoring more goals, which will keep us in more games and, and give us a chance to win games. But I still think we're going to we're going to be leaky at the back. And I just hope we've got enough in every game to score enough to, to win. No, but look at some of them coming up at home. Palace, West Ham, Sheffield United, Everton. There's, there's, suddenly there's winnable home games there, isn't there? Yeah. The five you've lost at home, Again, you wouldn't have expected zero points, but I don't think you'd have had huge expectations to have a great deal from them. Definitely not. So we should certainly have eyes on these fixtures, I think. Uh, Neil, what's your take on Burnley at the moment? I think they're, I think like we've touched upon, they're perhaps lower than I thought they would be um, at this point. But like you said, I mean, uh, in a very similar vein to us, Aside from the games where they've taken points, where were you putting them getting points, right? So I think there's there's a real you have to be realistic there. Um, I wouldn't confess to have seen huge amounts of you play, but it's um, you know at the, at the end of the day, the goal in your first year, uh, as ours was last year, and frankly is now this year, is finish. Uh, fi- you know, is, is stay up, right? So you you know if you if you can start to pick up some points hopefully after this weekend, um, you know, you'll, you'll be in a good place when it does finally gel. Like, again, maybe you fell into the same trap we did of doing too much, maybe, over the summer. I don't know. But, yeah, it, it can be it can be tempting when new investment comes in, I guess. I, I take it at the moment, right? You take that for you now, 17? Yeah, definitely. I think that's, you know... We, we, you'd, you'd like to hope for more, but I'm not getting greedy. If we, you know, as long as we're fourth bottom, I'll, I'll take that. Neil, is that does that apply to you as well? Because we would have expected progress this year, right? Yeah, I, I think at the start of the year, I was quietly hoping that there was an outside chance of top half. I don't think that's the case now. I think um, if you if you were to say right, you're going to finish. 15th, 16th, 17th, and Iraola's still going to be there. I think I would take that, presuming that all of our youngsters have continued their progress. Because then I think that does place us nicely for the year after. But now it's just about survival. Yeah, that's not what Mr Foley was looking for when I read his piece uh, with the mm-hmm. Athletic in the summer. And it- Big dreams for for top half. And, and the other beauty of obviously the two of you sitting here at the moment of, of why I wanted to do this one in pre-season was you were the two cool kids going into this season. Mm-hmm. So many of us, myself included, were very guilty of going, I think both of these have been near the, the, the top up, top end of the bottom half. Me and Suj went on James Walcott's podcast and the two teams we said, watch Bournemouth and Burnley. Look like an idiot now, lads. Um, but there is the mitigating of the of the fixtures and I certainly still think that both of you might still rise up the league I'm not certain you're both in a relegation fight now certainly but I'm not certain that that both of you will stay there actually I think the other problem is when you look around the other teams at the bottom this is where it gets serious is you start looking around and going okay Sheffield United are going to be in big trouble Luton will probably be in trouble but as you highlighted when you came on a few weeks ago Jack like they've got something about them and you look above the two of you at the moment, you go, I don't know who else is going to be in trouble. Who who do you see, Neil, was above you in the table if we group you two with Chef United Luton at the moment? Who else can you see being sucked into that? Everton, obviously. I think that goes somewhat without saying, just because of where they were last year. I think they're better than where they were, and obviously they did get three points against us. 12, but point, I think... 12 point deduction would be handy for you as well. <laughs> Well, I saw that and I, I was, wasn't going to say, that, but yes. I, it won't be that. I'm almost certain it won't well, be that. Yeah. But I'll take 11. I mean, heck. Yeah. yeah. I'll say, we'll, we'll, call it, we'll call it around 10. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at, you know, how teams have been going, like even Forest, they're not blowing the doors off. And there's always, I always, I always feel like there's one team that just from nowhere 
come Christmas and you think, oh, they're probably fine. And then they just all of a sudden get, you know, sucked in, um, you know, I know, Palace or Wolves or Fulham. I don't know who it will be, but I think you, you look at the table, anyone from 11th down is still, it could easily fall into it, right? Easily. It's only nine games. We're a quarter of the way through the season, right? Yeah, no, of course. Jack, anything to add to that? Yeah, I think very similar. Um, you know, I, th- I never actually felt that Leicester would would go down last year. I always thought they'd be the one that, you know, oh, they'll, they'll turn around, they've got enough, and, and lo and behold. Um, so I think realistically, you can still put Wolves, Fulham, Brentford, you know, in, in that bracket of, you know, if if we go on a run and win, you know, like our, our fixture run is, you know, if we if we do the opposite and manage to pick up wins where you'd even think you might pick up a few draws or something, it'll soon change. Um, again, not convinced it fully will. I think the the thing with with both us and and, and Bournemouth is we, we know we've we've invested in a lot of talent. So if it does you know happen and fall that the players play to anywhere near that potential and we get a bit of a you know togetherness going, then either one of us could quickly put you know a couple of points, you know, a couple of wins, a couple of draws on the board, and it all changes, doesn't it? Yeah, either one of us gets two wins and we're in mid table, right? Yeah. I yeah, I mean, be that quick wins, so. because the, the points are, are so low at, across that. I mean, Everton on seven, I want to say, from yeah. nine. So, I mean, then, yeah, you're, you're leapfrogging that and, and jumping above them, for example. We spoke about the home games you've got, Jack, but looking up till you host Liverpool, which is game week 19 scheduled for Boxing Day. As said, Palace, West Ham, Sheffield United, Everton. I mean, you've also got trips to obviously Bournemouth this weekend, Wolves away and Fulham away. Is Arsenal away and Brighton away over the run? Fair enough. But over a, a nine game period, that's a really good run of fixtures, mate. Yeah. You know, you've got to hope you've got to pick something up in some of those. And I'm sure we will. Um, it's just whether we pick up it to the extent that we need to. You know, there'll be a couple of wins in there at least, but it probably needs to be, be a bit more than that. And and for you, Neil, if we jump to game week 13, get mm-hmm. a trip to trip to Bramwell Lane, Villa, Palace, United, Luton, Nottingham Forest, Fulham, taking you up to a, a trip to the league leaders. No reason for mentioning that in game week 20. But the problem more for you is, and this is why I think there's so much more pressure on you for this game than there is on Jack's team. Jack, after you, gets to have Crystal Palace come and arguably the first home game they'd have all season would have expectations to get points. After this, you've got City away and Newcastle at home. And yep. then th- that that's yeah. the problem, isn't it? If it goes bad this weekend, you say, all right, it's three points from 10. Okay, you blink, it could come to be three points from 12, isn't it? And then you've got to do something on your mental to, to get yourself clear of it. Yeah, exactly, right. And uh, yeah, so I mean, if 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 we lose this weekend, that we're, we're 12 games without a win, frankly, right? Barring something monumental and that, I don't see how any manager survives that. No, and there'll, and there'll be too much external pressure, which is kind of circle back to the narrative. Did mm-hmm. you watch Monday Night Football? I, prob- I deliberately stayed clear. You probably don't want to. Um, and the reason I say that is, which really, it won't have helped. It was really bad timing for your football club, I think. Did you watch it, Jack? No, no, I was out. The, the problem is, and I, and I realised, I don't think there's any kind of Bournemouth, Gary O'Neill beef or hate amongst the fan base or something. But he really did come across well and tactically very astute off the back of you're having this run. He's come back and won and then comes across on the TV and you go, oh, sugar, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. No doubt about it. That's not going to have helped this narrative for you, has it? It was it was the worst possible result in every possible way for us. Um, and... <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I've got some thoughts on the, the whole game that would, would sound bitter, so I won't say it. But um, yeah, it was it was it was not good, not good timing, and I deliberately avoided Monday because I thought yeah, there right was for... no way it would it would it would make me anything other than angry. No, oh, and he was complimentary about the club, by the way. He never said. I, I would would like to say on on sort of record, as it were, that I you know I don't have any ill thoughts towards him, right? Like I think. He he was a, d- a good manager in the time we needed him, but the club made a move, made a, a move that I understood. So, I think at this moment in time we'll stay up now. Yes, Jack. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've also I've also said that when we played Sheffield United, and we also said they could stay up as well. So I don't know who the hell's going to go. So going to go I had down. a look at um a, uh, a expected points for the end of the, the season, um, and this news probably won't surprise either of you. But the this this site had you basically, I think, expected points sort of thirty seven and a half. I think for both of you, exactly the same to basically join eighteenth with then a distance to. Seven, uh, 16th but also you being a distance above the bottom two as well so how massive is this Neil is, is it must win territory yeah is it for I you think, Jack yeah. I think it's different because I don't think uh, there's not as much riding on it in terms of you know I, I know if we get beat 3-0 on Saturday we're not waking up to company being sacked um, uh, <laughs> I think given the run we've got, it's not must win, but I think it's must see a better performance because otherwise, you know, the the hope starts to to, to draw out with some of the players as well. And the more frustrated the fans get, I, th- I think in a way it, it suits us, you know, a bit away from home, not on massive ground. You know, there's not too many fans in there to to get on the back of, of either team. Um, yeah, I think it I think it probably suits us more because there's not quite as much pressure. Um, but I, th- I think, yeah, it's definitely a must win, I think, for for Bournemouth. That fair, Neil? Yeah, I mean, f- f- frankly, if if, if if we lose 3-0, then that totally changes the, the direction. Game, of, o- game over. If you lose play. really badly, it's game over, I think. That's it, yeah, absolutely done. And our season totally changes direction. As I would never team. understand, though, when, when they sack managers, when you've got then three rough fixtures afterwards, because what are they expecting the new guy to come in and do? It, it almost seems to me that would you not just give him another couple of fixtures and damage the limitation kind of thing? Yeah, I, I think you can spin that narrative, but then you get to know the players for a couple of weeks and then you start looking at Sheffield United game week 13 and right, get ready for this. Um, Bring it. You can start looking at it that way, I think. And then, you know, Newcastle at home, new manager, different atmosphere, maybe gives you a chance in a game, for example. Um, I should say, though, Jack, obviously it flips the other way and you go there and lose 3-0 again. Some of yours asking questions, surely. Yeah, I think I think there is. I think, like we said earlier, though, I think there's too much in the bank, and I think it, it's not at the point where the fan base is completely, you know, divided. I think people are a little bit gutted that we came up in the first place because they enjoyed winning every week. Um, you know, last season <laughs> you there was just a stop really... at March and try and do it yeah, again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just let someone else go up as long as it's not black. But I don't care. Imagine um, you were up by January. I think basically, mate. yeah, yeah. I think Leicester will be up by um, November at this rate. Yeah, yeah, it could um, be. But yeah, I think I think there's enough in there that I don't think the question marks will be asked the same. I think it's it's more it's more the it'll be more the personnel. People will be on Twitter pretending to be manager again, going, oh, I should play him, we should play that. And I think it's it's more that we don't know our strongest team when there's there's too much change where I don't think it'll be quite it won't be the at the definitive point of saying we've had enough, we want this to completely change. I think we're happy with what we've got. We just want to see improvements. Do you think you would have more points if Sean Dash was in charge of this team? Yes. I think there's definitely more chance of it. Because I think, you know, I think even the United game, we they were there for the taking in the second half. And I think that's one of the ones that the most frustrating for me, especially the most frustrating game at home, because it was, you know, they were on the back of a couple of bad results. And it just felt like, had we have had anything, you know, United didn't really chuck much at us. Um, but you just know what you get with Dyche it's at least a little bit more tidy at the back um, there's certain teams that would completely carve us open um, I think I think we'd have got comfortably battered by City as we always do and um, probably yourselves with your style of play um, but we'd have been we'd have been much more solid I think in, in, in a lot of the other games oh, Fair what would what would change this team for you at the moment then Jack? Like we'd mentioned, particularly, it feels like the wide forwards. I'm not too sure what's happening. What's what's the best pair in there, or does the system need to change to something that's that's more narrow, maybe? Yeah, possibly. Um, you know, I think I think at the minute we're just still naive with the bodies we're committing forward. Um, I don't think the personnel's helped. You know, I'd rather have started with Murich, I think, than, than Trafford. Not that Trafford's been bad. I just think it's it's just. I think there's a lot of people who in the squad where it feels like it's changed a bit as well. It's not the we got all the togetherness last season. The the, the players that have got us here now aren't playing. You know, Zorori's on the bench. 
you know, we're not seeing Jack Cork, Brownhill's in and out, you know, whereas, you know, you like to Berger straight in and Trafford straight in. I, I don't know. I think I'd just go a bit more back to basics at the weekend. I'd be, you know, for me, it would be Zorori probably starting Cork, maybe even coming in, even though his, his legs might be a little bit past it, but just to make us a little bit more solid. Um, but I think it's hard. I think, you know, if he was to drop Trafford now, it becomes a story when it doesn't need to be. Um, I can't see him deviating from it. I think he's just going to try and play through and hope that Trafford becomes part of this 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 side that we stick with. So who would you play in the wide areas? So you're saying bring Zaruri back in, Goodmanson back for the right-hand side then to give it more of that feel like last year maybe? Um, yeah, I mean, I think he'd... Goodmanson played more through the middle really last year. Um, like sort of the middle of the the, the sort of centre mids. Um, maybe Kolyosho or Odebert, whichever one he prefers. Um, or I'm do I wouldn't be opposed to it being Zorori one side, I'm doing the other, and just having a midfield three of, of Brownhill, oh, yeah. Cullen, um, Berg, whichever way around it would be, or Cork. Um, I don't think we need that extra player going forward, but. On the flip side, I don't think company's going to deviate from it. He's going to look at this one as, you know, he's going to smell blood and think we can go and really, really beat them. So, yeah. And I mean, essentially, the team we picked at Brentford was arguably more offensive than than it normally is, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. I think he's, and I think that's with how we played last season as well. We know we're only one one performance off completely blowing someone away. Um, but obviously, in this league, it's it's not as forgiving. We, we can try and play that way. And if it doesn't work, we're going to get hurt. Um, you know, and I think. With with the way we don't close down in defence and we give them so much space, that, that's that's your reason why you've already got a you know goal of the season contenders in pretty much you know every month that a team's played against us. Um, it was the same again at, at Forest with Hudson Odoi banging that absolute screamer in. So mm. I think I think we need to to do something with the defence because we're giving we're giving teams too much room. So until we get until we start to see much more from the attackers as a as a as a whole. And they'll start to contribute as an actual team. At the minute, it just feels like Foster's Foster's doing his own thing, and he's actually got a couple of goals. But I'm doing his trying stuff, and it's not quite working. And you know, Tressel was, was was hyped up as this you know really exciting player, and quite frankly, he's, he's he's looked poor, but also he's looked extremely lazy, which is is very frustrating. Okay, what can you tell us about Wilson Odebuck? I've kind of just summed up, and Tressel most might not have seen, but most won't have seen Wilson Odebuck either. Um, who I, I saw a quote from company saying once he gets in the team, we need to give him momentum and stick with him. What what can you tell us about him? Yeah, I think he he was the one that was signed more as as first team. Coley Osho has I think he'd only played something like five professional games in his career before he came to us. So it was remarkable that he actually you know had had the nod to to start the season with us and and, and played as well as he did. Um, I think Coley Osho has looked lively. He doesn't look like he's got quite the end product just yet. Um, similar player, really odd about to Coley Osho, quite fast, likes to beat his man. Um, you know, scored within sort of five, ten minutes of his of his Premier League debut against Chelsea. I hope there's there's a player in there that actually has that end product as well. Um, but again, he's, he's still only very young. I think he's 18 or maybe just turned 19. Um, so he's raw, but we need to build on him. But I think he's he's got a big ceiling. I think, you know, if company can really work on him and, and keep his confidence high. And I think I think that's the issue with these players. If we can keep the confidence high, then I think that, that that's you know that's half the job done really. But he looks a good player. He looks he looks promising. Um, but I think that's it. Sometimes when you see a, a highlight reel and it's called something like Wilson Odebert and not someone like Ashley Barnes, who <laughs> not that they're any type of similar player, but you know when you when someone's called Ashley Barnes, it doesn't quite strike up the same excitement as as a as a continental player. Yeah, no, I get that. I mean, for all I know, he, he's French. I've said Odebert. I mean, it could be Odebert for all I know, yeah. but I'm, assu- <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming I'm assuming it's not. It would be, Jack, if everyone was fit, it would be your favoured back four. Um, well, it's got to be Charlie Taylor left back. Um, Bayer. I think for me, it's a toss-up between Ekdal and Al Dakil, and then Roberts at right back. So you're going to be without most of that this weekend. I presume Bayer is back not... on the grass. Uh, oh, so... is it? Well, I've oh, seen yeah. a picture of him training. So whether whether that's a Sean Dyche back on the grass or an actual that, back on the grass, I don't know. That that would be a bonus in seriousness, wouldn't it? Yeah, massively. Um, I think I think looking at that defense, if you take Bayer out of it, 
it's no surprise that we've been leaking goals because I just don't think it's good enough. I think as much as Conor Roberts, I think, has, has played well and he's solid, I think for the amount of money we've spent and we've, we're have we still, you know, lining up with, we're only ever one injury away from looking weak at best. Um, we've just gone all in on wingers and attack. You know, we've got wingers galore, but the defence is quite weak. So, um, yeah, it would be Taylor. So Bayer. Roberts Roberts obviously serves a one game suspension this weekend. I presume yeah. he'll shove them along if Bayer's fit. Will he play out to kill right back? I would guess. No, That's I think what... he'll play Vitinho. Oh, of right course. Back. But he had a very difficult game against Chelsea, didn't he? Yeah, he he, he actually he And I brought... want to say he wasn't in the squad at the weekend. Was there a reason behind that? Or... No, I don't I don't know. Um he'd he he played quite well offensively against Chelsea. He gave us that bit like we had with Matson last year where he actually got forward and asked a little bit more questions, and I think I think he was actually involved at some point with the setup for for the um, Odebert goal. Um, I might be wrong, but it, he seemed to give us more of an outlet. Whereas you know Taylor's very, you know, you know what you're getting with Charlie Taylor. So I don't think it would be the worst. I think especially if you've got Taylor one side and him the other. Um, I think what tends what what happened against Chelsea was if if he went forward, then Josh Cullen would sit in right back so he would just drop in and cover um, so it wouldn't be the worst but yeah he, he did have a torrid time against Sterling he tore him to bits he's he's not the best defensively um, he's like a he's like a poor man's Trent Alexander-Arnold he's better going forward but still not the best defensively I think that's a great comparison actually um, talking of comparisons uh, Jack mentioned Neil of um, goalkeeper and a little bit concern I've heard vocally from you that you'd maybe change yours. Yeah, I think we need to... I think what needs to happen is we need to... Neto should sit one... Even if it's just one game, um, he's made a couple of mistakes. I think he is more than 50% to blame for the winning goal uh, against Wolves. Like he, he absolutely sold Phil Bill down the... Uh, you know, down the river... Um, and he's made a few of those. He's not looked comfortable at all this year. It's been night and day. I mean, last year he was incredible. Um, this year, for whatever reason, he's not. Um, sometimes I think you've just got to go. You've got to just go to and be the adult in the room and say, "Look, you're not playing your best right now. And I'm, I'm just going to, for one game, I'm just going to take the pressure right off you. Uh, and and here's we're going to play the other guy and see what happens. Um, I think." If he keeps, you know, that the manager can't influence some of those really stupid mistakes that players make. But if a player keeps making those mistakes, it's up to the manager to then to make a change, in my opinion. He's, um, is the other guy any good, though? Radu, um, he's played in the League Cups and done fine. I can't say more than that. I mean, being semi blunt, we've not been tested so much in the Cups so far. Can you tell me who will play left wing this weekend? Because, Lord, every week, mate, I predict it wrong. Every single week. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did a uh, I did a, a prediction for someone on the Friday. And not, not a chance. I mean, I think that's... We've got kind of got a similar problem in that we've got so many wingers and so many options there. I don't know who our best wingers are right now. I mean, I think Brooks should be there. Um, and I would play Tavernier. Those those would be the two wingers I'd play Tavernier so, on the left. That's what you started with against Wolves, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's what I would play. But whether or not he does, I don't know. Because you know, you've got Cliver and you've got uh, Dango as well that are in there. So And Lewis Sinistera is coming on loan, right? Yeah, he hasn't he's barely played. He wasn't in the squad on Saturday. We started the season with Semenyo playing in a wide position as well. I realised that was on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a lot of players there not being used. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you'd want what Tavernier left Brooks right? That's what I would do, yeah. Yeah. And then uh ideally billing in the middle, but I suspect it'll be Christie. Yeah, I mean, judging by what you're saying, Billing's gonna have to stay deeper for the next few, isn't he? With Christie probably coming. I like Christie actually, mate. I think I think there's a player there. Um centre back preference. Because there's I been a bit of be... chopping and changing there as well. There has, because Kelly's back fit now, so I suspect it'll be Kelly and Zabani. But I don't mind Senesi coming in as well. But I think Kelly uh, Kelly will get the nod, I suspect. Is he, is he a good leader, Kelly? Well, he had the captaincy stripped from him. 
Okay, that answers that one. <laughs> so he was our captain before this year. <laughs> so why did I? Sorry, why did he have the captaincy stripped off him? Then there's got to be a reason behind that. Yeah, I mean, he 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 again. He there seems to have been whatever it is the past few years. Whenever someone wears that armband for Bournemouth, they just go. They have some sort of uh, affliction and can't make rational decisions. Um, I think it was also impacted by some of his injuries that he had. He was spent a lot of time off the pitch. So they made a decision that there was a more capable leader in Neto. He's, he's obviously older as well, more experienced player. So I think it was maybe a, a better option. And to take, I mean, Kelly's only 25, something like that. He's, he's a young lad and he was given a captaincy of a Premier League club in that needs a real leader because we're down the bottom of the table. My club tried to buy him on deadline day. Uh, yeah. But what I'm saying by that is it will surprise many neutrals that he's not been definitely playing every mm. week. I Just off we, that I, alone. When I, well, when I saw that you'd made the offer, I thought we'd sell him. If you'd done it not on deadline day, I think we would have sold him. Okay. Might be one that comes back around then because Tottenham want cover. We don't yeah. want a first choice centre back. They want cover. If it's going to be cover for you, it might as well come be cover for my team, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he'll. I think I wouldn't be surprised if that's one that gets done in January, and I, I he'll go with my blessing. Okay, uh, is there anything here, Neil, that we can look at for FPL? The only player, like the the, the only thing that is a, if you've got someone like a Solanke, stick for him this week, but obviously. You're not going to bring him in for City away and, and, and Newcastle. After that, when the fixtures do start to turn, maybe we can reassess. But right now, it would be it would be pure team but bias. This is what we said three weeks ago now. I know. I, we get here, we reassess and we problems. know. I think part of the problem as well is you've, you've all these midfielders. and mm-hmm. We kind of was open by now. We'd have more clarity on Christie Correct. and Taverniers and who's playing left wing and all this jazz. Meanwhile... Cole Palmer and Simona Dingra have put themselves mm-hmm. right at the queue and are cheaper than many of these guys. So you're just, you're just not going to go there, are you? No. As, uh, and as I said, the, the only way, I, reason I would suggest a Bournemouth player is, is that's pure home team bias right now. Like, there, there's nothing that I can really say, unless you're already on Solanke, as I said, who I think is, is still a, a, a good option if you're already there. Uh, and, I, you know, he's, he's having a reasonable season he's on four goals I think which is fine yeah I mean if you've got Dominic Solanke you definitely be playing this week um yeah. but I think ironically even saying that there'll be a few people with Kirkes, for example who might have had since the start and have been holding through I mean with the defensive options this week I don't even know you, you'd get him in the team and say like Shimikas has developed now so you, you, you just I don't see where you'd make that that Kirkes call for example I think he's a player that's certainly worth keeping an eye on Definitely. Um, but I, I can't think for those who are on wild card now, I, I can't think there's anything that you'd, you'd go to, Neil. No, I, I don't. I think the, the only reason you would you would want to eventually, and it's not now, now is not the time to jump on, is if, let's say we have a positive result at the weekend and that changes that confidence. But my worry then is we change the confidence and then we go to City and they slap us for six or something. Uh, and we're back to where we are. <laughs> Are you um, still in Holland, by the way? Yes. I, I assume you intend to captain him against your team. Uh, I played the fifth. <laughs> the reason it just made me think about it is I was reflecting on the conversation we had on Correspondent Week, not this year, but last year, because you went to City in game week two. And we yeah. had a good we had a good giggle then about the idea that people were going to go without him when they were going to play you in game week two and you just got promoted and you were a bit of a mess at the time. Um, and you were the only team he didn't score against. Yeah. For about 12 weeks, wasn't it, I think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, who, what, what the, who's Salah got that week? Uh, I mean, he's, he's at Luton, mate. He's, he's very competitive. Luton, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I mean, yeah. I, I won't put anyone off captaining Haaland at home to us. Like... I don't I mean, think you need to make <laughs> exactly. I mean, again, it's just pure home team bias. If I if if I was to say anything other than that, uh, yeah. I mean, for me, if you've got him and he's uh, it's almost any home game against any team in the bottom half would be a non-negotiable yeah. for me. So yeah. that that falls into 
line. Um, but I'm sure well. Salah owners will be happy to go against him that night uh, or that weekend, rather. But no enablers potentially to consider from Bournemouth, unfortunately. But I think, Jack, there are a few from yours, actually. I did a wild card draft if I was doing it. And I looked at one option that had two Burnley players in it, mate. Um, Neil, I think you've got one of them, haven't you? Who yeah, you got? Taylor. Taylor. And you're saying you want him to play, Jack, and presumably he'll stay in the team, won't he? Yeah, yeah, I think he, I think he will. I don't think well, there's not having a left back. I think he's he's pretty nailed now. And out of the the defensive part, he looks the one that's actually let the least injury prone as well. So um, I don't think he's a bad pick in terms of minutes and his value. Um, I just can't really make much of a case for for any defender at the minute. Um, I know we're coming into an easier run of fixtures, um, but it's a different Burnley than what we had under Dyche. It's it's not that we know we're gonna we'll grind out a one nil or a two nil. I think. Company will, you know, if if we're two 0 up, he'll want the third goal to be ours rather than shutting up shop and and trying to keep it at that. So, um, I have more love for the attackers really. Um, and at the minute, a lot of the wingers are, are chopping and changing where it doesn't really feel like there's there's a pick there. Um, like you said with Odebert, he he looks, you know, especially what Company said as well, like he might be one of the ones, but it, it's a real flip of a coin really. So for me, the only other one is is um is Lyle Foster. Um, but he's obviously missed missed a couple of games with his suspension as well. Um, but seven seven appearances and five attacking returns isn't bad, and it, it would have been one more had that um, one not have been chalked out against um, against Forest. Um, I, I don't really think we've got a player that can do his job, so I think his his minutes are pretty safe, and he, he's he's, well, he's been our best player this season, so he would be. Um, the only one that I'd, I'd really want to make a case for, um, I guess, if you've you know if you've got a Charlie Taylor, then it's it's probably not a bad hold, but it's not. I wouldn't. We've conceded twenty three goals to an off. No, but for some it, for some it'll be on money, Jack. Right, and he's only going to sit yeah. third on the bench if we're being honest in most yeah. of the games, and he's at he's three point nine. Yeah, and if you've got three point nine, it's going to play, and it's last on your bench. Your fixtures aren't terrible enough to make you feel terrible about it. I don't think. Um, yeah. there's even a couple of ones you could arguably cover the only thing I'd literally say I was looking at your best one Chef United Omen game with 14 and if you had basically let's say Gabriel Shimikas and Cash you've got no need for him but if you had any other combinations he'd, he'd possibly be useful on something like that so I think 3.9 playing regularly is fine as last sub if you're yeah, short yeah, money. I'd go with that uh, on Foster the, the one I looked at uh, Jack was uh, I was trying to look at what it what I would end up with. If I tried to force a wild card team with uh, kind of players that people definitely want at the moment. So Cash, Trippier, Salah, Saka, Son, um, Holland, and Watkins, which to fit all them in is quite difficult. And I'd looked at a rotation that basically rotated Foster, Palmer, and Adingra, and you just from those three each week pick one in to play, and you you'd probably set up in a Four four two, or then four four three three. When you played Foss, you probably need to go with four decent back foot. You could easily go Trippier, Cash, as I said, Porro, and Gabriel. That's not terrible, and it it it, it can work. I'd, I'd I'd think I'd be keen for people if they can to pay the extra for him versus say Archer Jack. Yeah, I think so. Um, he's only five as well, isn't he? I think it was Slanky six six and a half. So um, I think he's you think he's reasonable given the. They both look like the same, similar kind of players for for, for either club. I think he's he looks like our Tawis man. I, I, I've asked been asked a few questions um, whether we, whether I think he's on penalties. Um, we didn't get that many penalties last season, so I don't know if he actually is. Um, but last season our penalty takers were um, Ashley Barnes or Rodriguez, so I think it tends to be the striker. So I'd be surprised if it wasn't. Um, but yeah, he, he, he looks good. He's been our best player. Um, he's looked good on the ball. He's he's looked physical. He's he, he looks like he can get in behind. He's he's been he's been a complete forward really. Um, I wouldn't be wouldn't be opposed. I mean, I, I was kind of looking to try, to try and fit Salah in, and I was debating moving Alvarez down to someone like him to see what that sort of freed up. Um, I'm not I'm not sure I'm going to do it, but I'd, I'd be open to the open to the idea of it. Yeah, I think if you're going with say Holland and Watkins as a front two, and going with a third that's I'd prefer if people can to use that money and think yeah. of saving something else, which something like Charlie Taylor would enable. If you, if you look at that as a combination, you might end up with say like Gay and Archer versus like Foster and Taylor. That might be what it is. And I think I'd prefer the two badly. 
ironically there, Jack. Uh, Neil, Jack mentioned penalties. Don't worry. I'll, I'll... <laughs> I won't mention it, mate. No, Neil's got no idea because he hasn't had a penalty for about three years. Well, that used to be us. 547 days, 50 matches. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> Didn't you share a graphic of like what uh, what average touch was, I think, Neil? Average touch in the penalty area per penalty. And Bournemouth was about 10 times more every other team or something and, over the last couple of years. And that was if years. we had one penalty, and that, which we haven't had. Uh, if we had an average amount of penalties, we would have been like in the middle. <laughs> so yeah, obviously, it, like five hundred touches per penalty or something like that. I think some yeah. madness, lads. Thank you. Uh, I wish you both the very best of luck. In all seriousness, I, I think a lot of us liked the two of you going into pre-season, and I don't think hope should be given up yet. You've both had rough fixtures. This is a particularly big one, as said, for you this weekend, Neil. Uh, go on, Pate. Give us a prediction. I'm going to keep the faith and say 2-1 to us. Jack? Despite saying I didn't think we were going to... We've got, got clean sheets in us, I'm going to go 0-2 um, to us. Oof. Sorry, Neil. That I mean, that's cojones out, I'm going to say. I, you've got me there, Jack. Fair game, mate. Um. <laughs> I, my my big concern, Jack, would be if like if Bayer's not available, Roberts not available, it looks a bit light, and the one thing they definitely do have up top is someone who score goals. I'm gonna give you the edge, Neil. Um <laughs> you've got to win, mate. Um, I'm gonna say two one to yourselves. But I still I, I, I keep saying it every week, Jack. I really do think you'd improve. There's something there. I'm and I don't know if that's bias from what I saw in the opening period of that game against my team in game week four, but you didn't look like a shit team at the start of that game, mate. You gave us a, probably as big a problem as anyone has in the opening sort of quarter of an hour of a game. Then it turned. So yeah. I know something is there. Yeah, I'm going to give you the edge, Neil. Uh, right, anything you want to pr- uh, promote before you go, Neil? No, just just the uh, X app uh, at AFCBNG. And yourself, Jack. Um, yeah, just the X or Twitter, whatever it has to be called these days, um, at Turfy Tupper. Good oh, stuff. Man. Thanks so both, gents. Uh, I'll be back with not the deadline stream uh, tomorrow. I think it's going to be 12 o'clock-ish. I'm going to sell us Park. Sorry, more important things to do on my Friday night. Mm-hmm. Next week's Clash of the Correspondence is one of the games that we'll be covering at our live show on November the 5th. It's with the two Dans, Luton Town versus Liverpool with Dan Ashby and Dan Lord. That's likely to be available for you earlier next week on Tuesday. Just sees me to say good luck to Neil and Jack. Thanks so much, gents. Cue music, please. Manchild.